Thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. I decided to get the Model X because I wanted the most technologically advanced car I could find that could haul a lot of people and would sort of satiate my need for a really fast performance style car. Now, three years later, in one extra kid, I've lived with the Model X. I've lived with white interior and falcon wing doors and software updates. And some things have been great, but some things haven't been as good as I would have hoped. So the first question that I would have as somebody who's been driving this car for three years is the doors. How the doors held up? Have you had door issues? Are they hitting anything? And are they horribly annoying? Uh, so my experience with the doors has actually been really good. When I first got the car, it was a crazy slow process to open up and close it. It was about four and a half to almost five seconds, depending on where I was. But the thing with the car is software updates over the years made that much better. Now they open up incredibly quick. Um, in three years, opening up in crazy tight spaces and parking garage with things overhead, my doors have never hit a car, a structure, a person. They have never hit anything which is awesome. I figured eventually they were going to hit something. What I have had happen though, is a lot of sort of false positive detections. So sometimes the sensors will think something's there and it's not, and they won't open all the way. I'll have to go into the center screen, hold the button down and manually kind of open the doors that way. But they have never hit anything. Now, oftentimes those false positives can make using the door is annoying. If I'm putting my kids in the car and I'm holding it and it doesn't open all the way, I have to kind of squeeze them in around it while I go in and open the doors up all the way. It has been a really pleasant surprise for a few reasons. My garage with my wife's pretty beastly sized minivan next door, the doors can open up all the way. And what you get with that is minivan style ingress egress with the car. And for those of you that load a lot of people into the car or a lot of sort of things, being able to just sort of go straight into the car instead of having to turn your body to contort around the door was really nice. So as somebody who, when I got the car, you know, had two kids and now has three, I'm constantly putting kids into the car and to just do it straight without bending my back is really nice. You get kind of the benefits of the minivan sliding doors, kind of the cool factor of those crazy uh, Falcon wing doors. So if you've been stuck staring at your phone or tablet, playing the same boring game you've been playing for years, I have the cure for phone boredom, Raid Shadow Legends. This game has been crazy popular. It's been downloaded 15 million times over the past six months. So here's the gist of the game. You get to be a champion. Graphics look unbelievable for a mobile game, but you sort of can pick who you want to be and you can fight other champions and sort of a PVP. You can beat the boss, you can get more silver, which they use to upgrade you as you go. They got weekly tournaments too as well. So you can fight in this arena. They got special dungeons if you wanna just level up your heroes. There's a ton of ways to compete. It sort of makes the game always seem fresh. And if all of this sounds awesome to you, you can check it out for the very, very fair price of zero dollars. It is a totally free game. If you wanna download it, Go to the link down below, and if you're a new player, you'll get 100,000 silver, plus 50 gems, plus one energy refill, plus one champion to get your game going. So you'll already be better than most people out there because you watched this video. The other question that I would have if I was getting a car now are those white seats. How did they hold up? It's it's a weird term to call it a vegan leather. It sounds like it's leather made from vegans, but no animal products in them. And again, somebody with kids, I know it seemed like a crazy decision to go for white interior. And as somebody who pretty much wears jeans every day, I was worried about the transfer over. In the first six months I had the car, I was cleaning it with leather wipes every week, and then after that I kind of just stopped doing it. So I haven't really cleaned the seats, aside from car washes, in two and a half years, and the seats still look really good. If you're considering getting a Tesla and you're worried about how that white interior is gonna hold up, I've got, I think, the worst use case. I wear jeans every day and I got three kids, and it has been almost pristine. And obviously being an electric car, you know, range is important. It's, it's how you get from point A to point B. And I got the 75D, which no longer exists, but at the time, three years ago, it was the cheapest option. It was the least expensive way 
to get into a Model X. And I had an advertised range where Tesla told me with 100% charge, and it would be about 235-ish miles. Now you're not supposed to charge EVs, at least Teslas especially, up 100%. It's not good for the cells. So I do an 80% charge. Highest range that I ever saw when I got the car was 205, 206. And now three years later doing that same 80%, I'm getting about 194 to 196 miles. So the first thing you'd say is that's relatively significant range degradation. You know, you're losing six to seven miles. Um, it may be due to battery degradation, it might be due to software calibration, it could be due to a lot of different factors. It's still a decent amount of range. I can get to most places that I want, but certainly I wish I had more. Autopilot, I think, is one of the coolest things about a Tesla. It's their quasi-semi-autonomous driver assistance features, if you want to call it. So when I got my car, it was one of the first that had Autopilot 2.0 hardware built in. Uh, and there was another package. It was a full self-driving package. And when I leased the car at the time, we were told that it would come with a bunch of new features, that the car could be full self-driving by the time that three years was up. Uh, and I, like a fool, paid the extra money for it. I think it was like 4,000 bucks at the time, uh, and I've had nothing. I've gotten no benefit from that full self-driving. So difference between Autopilot 2 and what's in cars now, Autopilot 3, essentially it's a new computer, and it's one camera that kind of is pointing down at the driver. But what I sort of found very early on about the Tesla, and I came from a Model S beforehand that had no Autopilot at all. So it wasn't my first EV experience, but it was my first time sort of trying to use Tesla's semi-autonomous driving, and I didn't have any of it. I had a car capable of it, but I didn't have any autopilot features. The cars that were older with Autopilot 1 were driving on freeways and all kinds of city streets, and I couldn't do any of that. And so where I started to be frustrated with Tesla, but also see the beauty of software updates. A few months in, I got a software update, and suddenly autopilot was on my car, but I could only drive it using going 55 miles an hour. And then a few weeks later, that went up to 65, and then I went up to freeways, and things got added to the car over time that made it infinitely better when I first got it. And I can't overstate enough how important and paradigm shifting it is to have a car that can get over the air software updates. I don't have to go to a dealership or a service center to get these new features. They just show up in my car. From day one purchase, I had a car that couldn't do any autonomous driving. So now I have a car that can navigate freeway interchanges and exit for me with just me paying attention to keep my hands on the wheel. That is amazing. Um, I've also gotten some other cool stuff too and the, the tech geek in me is kind of the reason that I like Tesla. So now I have Smart Summon where I could theoretically stand pretty far away from the car and the car will summon itself to my position. And that's been more of a party trick. I've tried it a few times, it's worked okay-ish. Uh, but I certainly wouldn't trust it if I didn't have line of sight to the car and I'm not entirely sure it's not going to hit something. Um, but the software updates, the technology in the car is absolutely amazing. And speaking of hitting something, uh, that was probably the biggest reason that I went with a Tesla was safety. And I could talk a lot about how it doesn't have an engine in the front, it's all crumple zones, the battery pack gives the body extra rigidity. The Model X is the safest SUV that has ever been tested. In fact, during the testing, the car couldn't be flipped. It is just an incredibly safe car. And somebody with kids, that was really important to me. If I had filmed this review a month ago, I would have said the car has been close to flawless. But the past month, I've kind of had a, a litany of problems. And it used to be when I had issues before the Model 3 came out, Tesla service was amazing. They would come to my house or the office, they would take the car, they'd leave me alone or they'd bring it back all fixed. Since the Model 3 came out, Tesla service is not their strong point. Um, you have to make an appointment generally two, three weeks, four weeks sometimes in advance to bring your car, which is problematic if you have an issue, it needs to be fixed ASAP. So for example, my car has 16 parking sensors built into it. It's great, they're ultrasonic sensors, you see them on every car. What I didn't know is that my three-year-old thought it'd be fun to try to push a button and push one of them all the way into the bumper of my car. So I don't know if that's easy to do on other cars, if you can walk up to a BMW and push a sensor in, but I did feel like a three-year-old shouldn't be able to do that. I wanted to get it fixed because I couldn't use autopilot. I couldn't use a lot of the safety features on the car because one the sensors was pushed in, earliest appointment Tesla had was three weeks down the road. That 
kind of stunk. And maybe you don't think about how often you roll down your driver's side window to say hi to somebody, to vent the car, all kinds of stuff. I don't know what happened to my driver's side window, but when I roll it down, I get a horrible gut-wrenching And when I want to try to roll the window back up, it won't. I have to kind of inch it up little by little and kind of hold it and then sort of pull it up. That's a problem. Now, my lease is up on the car, so I'm not that worried about it in all honesty, but if I was keeping this car, if I'd bought it, that would be an issue of concern. And these are all smaller things. These are small problems that you could have on a car, it's essentially a computer with wheels. And I realize that, and perhaps this is, is nitpicking. And Tesla, fairly or unfairly, has been criticized for maybe not having the best quality control with their cars, and maybe this is symptomatic of that problem. But the things that matter, the car always being able to drive. Uh, I never had any issues with that at all. The call, car has always started when I needed it to start. I've had no real significant problems with the car, but a lot of little things that I wish would be improved. I wish for the price of the car, the interior was better. My car has eight cameras around it. The most technologically advanced car perhaps that's ever been on the road. See, and I don't have a 360 camera. That's crazy to me. I don't have code hooks to hang laundry. That is insane to me. I, well, I love the helicopter roof. Tesla over-engineered little visors that go along, which block no sun at all, because obviously the sun is going to come above or below it. Tesla does some things amazingly well, and some stuff that is still just like a, a big head scratcher. So the car is going back and I'm going to miss the Model X more than any car I've ever had because it was so different than any other car I ever had. It got significantly better from day one until now. Those Falcon wing doors are unlike anything else I ever had, the practical aspect of it, the fact that I could haul all of my kids, take my grandparents, my wife, we could all go somewhere in a car that went zero to 60 in four and a half-ish seconds was amazing. And I'm going to miss every aspect of that car, but I'm not getting another Model X. And the reason why is I think why a lot of people aren't getting an S or an X right now. The interior of my Model X, while looking beautiful and still modern, is exactly the same interior that I had now six years ago on my Model S. And I look at what Tesla's doing with the Model 3 and the Model Y, how they've changed orientation of the screen, how the cars look different and have more tech than the S and the X, which in some cases are two, two and a half times more expensive. So if I got another X, certainly would look the same inside, and I'd be looking at that same interior for what would be nine years by the time that lease ended, but I wouldn't get the things that three has, like being able to use my phone as key, or being able to have a card as a key, being able to take advantage of real sort of level three supercharging at 250 kilowatts. Those are all things that I really like to have, and things that I would have missed if I had decided to go with another Model X, which I thought about for a while, I thought about going to another Model S, but the geek in me, the nerd, kind of won out. So I'm going with a two-year lease on a Model 3. I'm gonna have to do some weird configurations when I wanna fit three kids in the back. My wife has a minivan, so when we have to drive three, I'll make it work, but generally, I have to fit two kids in there, and the Model 3 should be pretty good for all that. And I'll get the latest technology from Tesla and by the time that lease is up in two years, who knows, they'll be driving a truck from the future. I would never do this if I had to play